This is section 4.5 on linearization and Newton's method. Uh, we have th what's called a linear approximation to a curve. In our study of the derivative, we have frequently referred to the tangent line to the curve at a point. What makes that tangent line so important mathematically is that it provides a useful representation of the curve itself if we stay close enough to the point of tangency. We say that differential differentiable curves are always locally linear a fact that can be best appreciated graphically by zooming in at a point on the curve as exploration one shows. So what this is saying is if you have some sort of function and we graph it and there's a curve there, you can pick any point on the curve and as long as you zoom in far enough, let's say that point right there, if you zoom in right here in, uh, with your calculator, this point will look like that. And the more we zoom in, the straighter the curve is gonna look. So very locally, we can represent this curve with a line, and that's where we get linearization. If f is differentiable at x equals a, then the equation of the tangent line, L of x equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a, defines the linearization of f at a. The approximation f of x is L, so we can approximate the actual function by using the line. Is the standard linear approximation of f at a the point x equals a is uh, the center of the approximation. Well, <clears throat> this is just a fancy way to write a line. We have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's exactly what's going on here. The L of x is the y right here. The f of a, well, function value is the y value, and they've just added this over. So it's like adding y1 to both sides. Here's the derivative of a, or the slope of the tangent line. And then we have x minus a, or x minus the x value that we're using. <clears throat> so this is really nothing new from what we've been doing. So, uh, well, here we have it. Find the linearization of f of x equals this parabola at x equals 2. So we want to find a line. Here's the parabola right here. And we want to find an equation of a line that we could use to approximate the values of curves but this line is only good right at x equals 2 or near it. Once you start getting away from 2, then these values are going to get farther and farther apart. I mean, if we go all the way out to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and let's say 9, now these y values are way apart. So this is a bad, very bad approximation. So the line's a good approximation of the curve as long as we're close to the value we're given. Uh, this is just finding the equation of a tangent line. So we have f of 2 equals 4 minus 4 minus 15. So 4 minus 4 is 0, so negative 15. So the point is 215. f prime of 2 equals 2x minus 2 evaluated at x equals 2. That's 4 minus 2, so the slope is 2. Lots of 2's going on there. Uh, so the line is y minus 15 equals 2 times x minus 2. So we have y equals 15 plus 2 times x minus 2. And of course, we can simplify that. Uh, we have y equals 15 plus 2x minus 4. And so y equals 2x plus 9. But instead of writing y, we'll write L of x to denote that this line is used as an approximation to this curve but only very close to two. So this would be a good approximation as long as we use something like 2.1 or 2.2 or 1.8. As long as we plug these values in, it's gonna be a very close approximation to the original function. A definition, we have differentials. Let y equals f of x be a differentiable function. The differential dx is an independent variable and the differential dy is dy equals f prime times dx. Well, when you have a function, f of x, and you take the derivative, dy dx equals f prime of x, well, then you can multiply both sides by dx. These act as variables. So we have dy, the differential y, or the, um, the difference in y, the change in y, equals the derivative times the change in x. So we're going to look at some examples on how we're going to use this. In example six, we are finding the differential dy. 
Find the differential dy and evaluate dy for the given values of x and dx. So we're going to take letter A here. We have uh, dy dx equals 5x to the fourth plus 37. Well, that's a derivative in these differentials. This is the change in y. And this is the change in x. And they're telling me that the x value is 1 and the change in x is 0 0.01, a small change. So the differential y equals 5x to the fourth plus 37 times dx. And now we're going to evaluate that for an x value of 1 and a, a differential value of dx of 0 0.01. So we have dy equals 5 plus 37. There's plugging 1 in for x times 0 0.01. And of course, uh, we have, uh, what, 42 times 0 0.01, which is 0.42. There's letter A. For letter B, we have dy equals 3 cosine of 3x dx. And we're going to evaluate this. So dy equals 3 times the cosine of 3 pi. And then we're going to multiply that by negative 0 0.02. So that's equal to 3 times, let's see, the cosine of 3 pi. So there's 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. The cosine is negative 1 times negative 0 0.02. And that's uh, negative 3 times negative 0 0.02. So that's uh, positive 0 0.06. So the change in y is 0 0.06 when the change in the y, or change in the x, is negative 0 0.02. Letter C. Uh, we have a function that would, we probably want to take the derivative implicitly here. So we have 1 plus dy dx equals first times derivative of second plus the second times derivative of the first. And let's see, we have dy dx minus x dy dx equals y minus 1. I can factor out the dy dx, which leaves 1 minus x equals y minus 1, and then divide by 1 minus x. So dy equals y minus 1 over 1 minus x times dx. Let's go back up and look at the values. This is when x equals 2 and dx equals 0 0.05. So dy equals, I need a y value, minus 1 over 1 minus, see the x value was 2, and the differential value is 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Now I just need to find this y value. Well, the original function is x plus y equals xy, where x is 2. So 2 plus y equals 2y. So 2 equals y. So we have 2 for the y as well. So that equals 1 times 0 0.05. So we have 0 0.05 over negative 1. So the differential, the value, of the differential y is point negative 0 0.05. So when x changes 0 0.05, y changes negative 0 0.05. In example 8, we're, at, we're estimating the change with differentials. The radius r of a circle increases from a equals 10 to 10.1. Use dA to estimate the increase in the circle's area and compare this estimate with the true change in A and find the approximation error. Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared, and the derivative of A with respect to r is 2 pi r, and then if you multiply by dr, you get dA equals 2 pi r dr. The change in r of a circle increases from 10 to 10.1, so dr, just by doing a little subtraction, uh, we take 10.1 minus 10. The change in r ends up being 0.1. Well, we want to know, we want to approximate how much does the area change when the radius changes by 0.1. So we have the change in area equals 2 pi times the original radius, which would be 10, 
times 0.1. So that equals, let's see, 10 times 2 is 20. 20 times 0.1 is 2 pi. Now we need to calculate the actual change. So the approximated change is 2 pi meters squared. Well, if we take, uh, let's say, the area of the original is pi times 10 squared, and when we change the radius from 10 to 10.1, we get pi times 10.1 squared. So we have 100 pi for the original area, and for uh, 10.1 squared, we have 102 0.01 pi. Now if we subtract these two from each other, we get 2.01 pi. So there's the actual difference between the two areas. But when we use differentials, see it's an approximation of the, di of the change. So the area actually changed 2.01 pi, uh, but we approximated it at 2 pi, which is you know, pretty close. The approximate error in this is simply 2.01 pi minus the 2 pi which is the actual answer minus the approximation, which is actually 0.01 pi meters squared.